Hey, hey everyone, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com and today I want to show you how do you do the famous frame switch transition that you see all over television, especially reality shows, anytime where you're going from one unrelated subject to another. Maybe it's uh, Team A is leaving uh, for the airport and Team B decided to stop and take a selfie and they missed their train. Or it's a singing competition and you're seeing practice Team A and then uh, practice Team B. It's usually a way to get from one uh, unrelated topic really to another uh, and you see this all the time. So we're asked, hey, how do, you do, how do you do this? And I'm gonna show you real quick in Premiere Pro. I'm using CC 2017, but the great thing is that this works in every single version of Premiere, so it doesn't matter what version you're using. We get that a lot. If I do something in CC 2014, someone will say, hey, how do I do this in CS6? Well, good news is it's the exact same way for all these different apps. All right, so let's get started. First thing we need to do is go to File, New Sequence. All right, I'm doing a, a 1080p a sequence here. I'm just gonna call it Sequence 7, that's fine. Okay, so we've got two clips here. We've got the selfie team here, la 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 la, and we've got the girl sniffing a flower. Okay, so just to follow the tutorial, I want this shot to go first, and then the selfie crew. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the selfie crew on, on layer video one right there, and the girl sniffing the flower on layer two. Okay, so there's two things you have to do before you animate. You have to pick timing, and you have to pick framing. So let's do timing first. To make things easier, I'm gonna do everything on whole seconds, right? So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow this clip to run for one second before I do anything else, right? So the viewer has time to watch what, what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and click the playhead position right here and change it to one second. And that's gonna be the first marker. So hit M, and then we'll just go to two, hit enter, and hit M, right? Three, enter. And M and four. Enter and M. And I'm gonna zoom in here real quick. So uh, there we go. No, no need to be zoomed out so far there. Okay, so you've got one second, two second, three second, four second, right? Four markers. So we've got our timing placed. Now let's figure out our framing. Okay. Here's where it becomes a little bit more artistic, but it's important that you make this decision prior to your animation. You can go back and make changes once you've done uh, uh, your animation, but uh, it makes things so much more complicated. So let's make our decisions now. So highlighting this top layer, let's go ahead and hit Shift-5, which is our effects controls. And right here, you've got your motion, position, and scale. If it's closed, if it, just twirl it down, no big deal. Um, typically, when you start doing this stuff, you'll start at going half screen, right? So boom. 50% and then you'll move it over like so, right? And make sure you're on a whole number there so you can uh, touch the uh, the uh, the frame line. So in other words, don't make it like 474, right? It would actually be 480 in this particular case. And then we'll just do the same thing to the bottom layer. We'll scale that down to 50% and just move it over, right? Okay. So what's the issue that you see here? Well, stylistically, you've got both frames touching one another. And if you're down with that, if that's the look you're looking for, cool, we can keep moving. I don't like that. I like having a little bit of visual separation between my frame lines. Completely uh, an artistic choice, but you, it's important that you make this choice prior to animating, just for ease of life. I'm gonna do 49.5 for the scale, right? Just give me just a little bit of room. Go down to the other layer here and 49.5, boom. Okay, cool. So you see this little bit of visual separation here, right? But you've also, Got some separation right here and right here. I don't want that. So let's go ahead and this is the layer we're animating right here, the, the girl with the flower. And let's just go ahead and move it over to the left until it's touching the frame line, which would be at 475. And we'll do the same for the selfie crew. Move it over until it's touching the frame line. Okay. So now I've got this cool little gap in the middle, and I like that better. That, to me, is a little bit of visual separation, so I, I, I can tell that uh, the shots are different, right? Okay, cool. Here's the great part of this animation. Most of this animation is already done now because we've already taken care of the, the, the layout. It's it. So let's go ahead and go to our second marker. You can hit Shift-M to go forward with markers, or you can hit Command-Shift-M to go backwards. Now, I don't know the PC uh, uh, keystroke for that, so if you do, go ahead and leave it in the comments. But again, backwards and forwards, right? All right, so I wanna go to this second marker. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my video layer two, which is her right here, is highlighted. And go over here to the, the keyframes and, and turn on the stopwatch on position and scale. That's gonna allow me to animate, right? Now let's go back to the first marker, Command-Shift-M on the Mac. And let's go ahead and instead of altering these numbers, there's no reason, just go ahead, click reset. Boom and boom. So if I hit home and then spacebar to play, 
boom, right? We've got the makings or the start of the makings of this thing. Now, of course, it slams into its last keyframe like it hit a brick wall, and that's a personal pet peeve of mine. So I'm going to go over here to the keyframes. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to make life a little easier. I'm going to drag select over both of the last keyframes and then right click temporal interpolation and do ease in. So it has a linear keyframe at the start and a, 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 an eased keyframe at the end, right? So it starts out hard and then slowly descends, Whoa. right? Cool. That's what we want. Okay. So that part's done. So what do I do? Well, like I said, I want to start here at the beginning of the timeline and hold for a second, giving the viewer uh, uh, the ability to see the frame and then it dips down. And then right here, while it's in the split, the split view here, I want this to hold for another second so we have the time to understand that I'm looking at two different pieces of video. So at the, the, the third marker, which is another second away, or three seconds, depending upon how you want to look at this, this is where the animation is going to start again. But remember I just said almost all the animations have been done for us already. So it's literally just click on this layer, which is these people right here. Just turn it off, turn it on, right? And go ahead at this marker and go ahead and turn your keyframes on right there. And then go to your next marker. Shift them and go ahead and hit the reset parameters. Boom and boom. And again, just like last time, drag select over the keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation, and ease in, right? So if I roll back or if I hit home and then I hit spacebar, you've got the makings of the famous frame switch. Wait a second, what's happening here? Ah, we have only one issue to address here. And that's the fact that in Premiere, Everything is uh, layer based. So whatever's on layer two will be above layer one. Whatever's on layer three will be above layer two and so on and so forth. So what do we do? Well, you find your, your animation right here. And then right between these two, key, these two uh, markers right here, there's no animation going on. So this is after the first uh, frame animates and before the second frame animates. All you have to do is somewhere in the middle here, grab your razor tool and cut both layers, right? And then over here, which is the second animation, just flip these up. See, there you go. So just to break that down, this video is above this video here, but then after the animation and before the second set of animation, we switch and now this video is above this video, right? So you roll it back. Zzz. Zzz. Pretty simple, huh? I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. Now, of course, if you wanna keep things organized because stuff like this drives me crazy, just go ahead and just drag that and down. That's it. If uh, there's uh, if that's all you want to know about this particular effect, we're done. We're good to go. Try to get these things done quickly. But I want to show you something um, th that will make your life a little bit easier. If, let's take this up another level. What if you do this effect all the time and you don't want to hand animate this stuff all the time, like over and over again? What if you do this eight times in one episode and you've got 20 episodes or whatever it happens to be? Let's build something procedural then. All right. So we've got this down, right? We're going to go ahead and follow this exact same timing, but we're going to do this so everything trickles down. So let's go ahead and go to new, file new, sequence, and I'm going to call this video A, right? Okay. Voila. And then we'll go ahead and just right click on video A and duplicate, and we'll call this video B. And I'll duplicate video B one time, right click, duplicate, and we'll call it just build. I don't know what you want to call it, but... It's fine by me. All right, so double click on build. Okay, so now we're gonna, we're gonna build everything in this timeline, right? Just like we did before, but we're gonna do one slight tweak. In video A, let's go ahead and put the girl with the flower here in video A, Oops. like so. And in video B, let's go ahead and put the uh, selfie crew, in video B, right? And then go to build. So we'll have video A. We're gonna put that on layer two, remember, just like last time. And then video B. Put that on layer one and let's zoom in of course because we don't need all that space all right so it's really no different than we did last time let's go ahead and set our markers go to one second booyah and two seconds marker and three seconds marker and four seconds marker all right so going back to the Second marker, like we did before, right? Video A. Let's go ahead and go hit Shift 5 for effects controls. And let's go ahead and do 49.5, just like last time, or whatever value you think is right for your creativity there, for your setup, for your style. And 475, right? Video B, go back to there, 49.5 on the scale. Or 
What you can do, before I do that, let's go ahead and highlight layer. Let's do something fun here. Highlight motion on video A and hit copy, right? Then highlight B, highlight motion, and hit paste. Now B is right behind here, right? And you're like, well, why would I do that? Well, if you just feel like changing things differently. And then just scooch it over like that. Okay, so I've got the same style frame that I had last time. So now let's just animate. All right, so video A, go ahead and turn on the stopwatches. Boom, boom. And go back, command shift them. Or you can take your, your control or your time operator, your CTI, and right there, and hit reset. Booyah and booyah. And remember, just like I said before, just like last time, I hate brick wall animation. So let's go ahead and ease that bad boy in, like so. All right. Cool, just like last time. All right, moving on to this keyframe right here, the third one. Go on to video B, turn on the stopwatch for position, turn on the stopwatch for scale, and then go to the very last marker here, like so, and hit reset, booyah and booyah, right? And of course, drag select over the keyframes, right click, temporal interpolation, and ease in. So if we roll back, we're almost there, just like we did last time, going between these two markers right here, boom, boom, right, somewhere there, grab your blade tool, your razor tool, and get ch to chopping, and then just put B above A, roll it back, and there you go, right, so we've rebuilt what we've had before, and of course I'm going to drag these and just drag them down because that drives me crazy. La la la. All right, so we've got this, and so you're going to you're going to say, "Hey, Sean, why? Is, how is this at all different than what we just did?" Well, one, this is great practice, but two, I'm going to show you that now that we've built a procedural comp, anything I do to video A and video B will automatically trickle down here, right? So let's get more footage. All right, so I've imported some more footage. I've got this clip right here. La di da. And I'm just gonna pull this up 50%, there we go. I've got this clip, and I've got this clip, right? So let's go ahead and replace some footage. Let's go into video A, and we'll just put that video on top, right? Get rid of it, right? And then in video B, just go ahead and put that video on top. Okay, so if I go to my build here, it's now trickled down. So you've now built a procedural comp. Anything you do to video A and to video B will trickle down into your final comp. So if you do this effect a lot and you don't want to hand animate it ever again and the timing is perfect, then by all means, create yourself a procedural comp and then duplicate it and then just keep using it over and over and over again. So yeah, that's it. We're completely easy animation. I showed you how to do a one-off in case you just uh, need to do this effect once. And I also showed you how to build a procedural animation just in case you want to do this over and over again throughout your, your project. Um, but you know what? What if you're too busy? We get this call all the time. Hey, I'm just way too busy. Thank you for the, the tutorial, and it's great to know how things work, but I'm just too busy. Well, you know what? I created a little something called Premiere Essentials, and it's this very effect and so, so many more. Over 120 uh, drag-and-drop presets, and it's only 29 bucks. But you know what? I love you guys. I seriously just want to give you a big old bear hug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you a 20% coupon code for watching this tutorial. That's right. If you put Run Rampant in the store, in the, in the coupon code, you'll get 20% off on an already very uh, cheap uh, priced product. So thank you for that. And if, uh, if you end up using our Premier Essentials, hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think. I always love to hear from people. But until next time, I'm Sean Mullen from RampantDesignTools.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you later.